In this video, we're going to be looking at the special test used in the diagnosis of injuries to the menisci of the knee. And recall that in each knee, there are two menisci. There's a lateral meniscus and a medial meniscus. And these special tests that we're going to look at are useful in making that diagnosis for both lateral and medial meniscus injuries. Now, before we get into those, let's talk about typical mechanisms of injury for the meniscus. The most common one that you're going to see is a closed chain rotational mechanism. So oftentimes people will get this when they're walking on uneven terrain, stepping downstairs. So they step down and they get some excessive rotation. Also slipping on wet ground, whether it's rainy outside and you're on the sidewalk. I've seen people slip getting in and out of a bathtub. They ought to outlaw bathtubs because of this. Uh, but generally a closed chain rotational mechanism. Although this is not the only mechanism of a meniscus injury. You can have degenerative age-related changes to the menisci. You can have compensations from an injury or surgery on the opposite side. So I'll give you an example of this. I have a patient right now who underwent a right ankle surgery, right ankle ORIF. And as a result of that, she was weight-bearing as tolerated for a while on the right side. The right side was painful. It got a little bit weak on the right side up the chain and so she was favoring her left side putting more weight through her left side she was in her 70s she was already a little bit overweight and so you can imagine that putting that weight through the left side over and over and over again might cause some irritation of the meniscus especially if there's a little bit of excessive rotation that occurs periodically at the knee possibly from some hamstring or gastroc weakness okay? And so that could certainly cause an injury to the meniscus. Is it degenerative? Is there a little bit of closed chain rotational mechanism? I don't know. All I know is that I tested some of these tests down here and they were positive. And it turned out she did have a meniscus injury on her opposite side. And then sometimes there's just no known source and you just have to accept that. You look at the patient and they're really not that old, certainly not geriatric. And so it kind of rules down a, a degenerative or age related change to the meniscus. They don't recall any kind of closed chain rotational injuries or any mechanism consistent with a meniscus injury. Uh, there's no real gait abnormalities, no real compensations from a past injury or surgery. So there's just no known source, but the special tests for a meniscus are positive. And so therefore you would probably treat this as a meniscus injury, especially if they have joint line tenderness. This joint line tenderness or joint line pain, this is big very important in the clinical exam. And it's really not so much a special test as it is part of the objective exam. So let's say a patient comes in with knee pain and they point to their lateral joint line and they say, this is where my pain is. You then go and you press on the lateral joint line and it reproduces their pain. That is big. If a patient comes in with knee pain and they say, I've got pain on the medial joint line and you push on that medial joint line and it reproduces their pain, that is big. Notice here the sensitivity is 89% for that and the specificity is 97%. That means if a patient comes in and you reproduce that joint line tenderness, there's a 97% chance that they have a meniscus injury. If they don't have that joint line tenderness, there's an 89% chance that they do not have a meniscus injury. And these values note are slightly lower for a medial meniscus tear, but again, if they have that joint line tenderness and you can reproduce it with firm palpation, that is big. And that's always where you should start before going into these other special tests. That being said, the other special tests for a meniscus tear are as follows. Thessaly's test, Apley's compression test, McMurray's test for a medial meniscus. There's also a corresponding McMurray's test for a lateral meniscus. And then there's Steinman's test part one and Steinman's test part two. So big points here. What would originally cue me to start thinking about a meniscus injury? Well, the patient comes in with knee pain and they point to either the medial or the lateral joint line of their knee. That joint line tenderness is big and it definitely steers you down this path. You probably also wanna find out their mechanism of injury. And nine times out of 10, there's gonna be a closed chain rotational injury. If that is the case, you should definitely test for an injury to the meniscus. Also understand that if there is a closed chain rotational mechanism, there could also be a tear to the ACL. So you should also test the ACL special test, which we cover in a separate video. 
Now, one final point here on these special tests. Other than McMurray's test, which does have a separate test for medial meniscus and lateral meniscus, none of the other special tests have that differentiation. So to figure out which meniscus is affected, given a positive test, you just think about which side of the knee is painful. Is it the lateral side or the medial side? If the medial side of the knee is painful, 99% of the time it's a medial meniscus tear. If the lateral side of the knee is painful, 99% of the time it's a lateral meniscus tear. And again, that's that importance of that joint line tenderness. So when we do Thessaly's test in just a minute and it's positive, and you're thinking, is it medial or lateral? Well, just think about where their pain is. Is it medial or lateral? And that should give you your answer. Let's get into these special tests right now. The first meniscus special test we're going to cover is Thessaly's test. To perform Thessaly's test, the patient will be positioned in single leg support on their test side leg with light, emphasis on light hand support, either on the PT's hands or on the treatment table or some other very stable piece of furniture. It could be parallel bars. Let's look at getting into the test position first. So there's my light hand support on a treatment table, and I'm also in right single leg support. So we'll be testing the integrity of the right menisci here. Okay? And for the light hand support, I'm just using two fingers. Realistically, this table should probably be a little bit higher, but the whole point of having light hand support, whether it's on the PT's hands or a piece of furniture, is so that way you're maximizing weight bearing through the test side knee. If you're using a significant amount of hand support here, you're minimizing the weight bearing on that side, and so it may skew the results of the test and give you a false negative. So overall, here is the test position for the right menisci. Now, once the patient is in single leg support on their test side, in this case, the right side, they're gonna allow their test side knee to bend to approximately five degrees of knee flexion, as you see right there. So not very much flexion. And then they're going to slowly and carefully rotate their knee through internal and external rotation. Basically, they're just going to pivot about their knee with their foot planted, as you see right here. Now, if this was painful, that would constitute a positive test. And we'll talk about what that means in just a few minutes. And if you had a positive test at five degrees, there's no need to proceed any further. It's a positive test, you're done, okay? However, if this pivoting at five degrees of knee flexion is not painful, then the patient will allow their test side knee to bend to 20 degrees. And the same process is repeated at 20 degrees of knee flexion. Slowly and carefully rotating their knee through internal and external rotation in closed chain. Now, if that pivoting at both five degrees of knee flexion and 20 degrees of knee flexion is painless, you have a negative test and it likely indicates that the menisci in that knee are healthy and intact and probably no injury to them. However, if there is reproduction of the patient's familiar knee pain in either five degrees of knee flexion, 20 degrees of knee flexion, or both, then that indicates a positive Thessaly test and that may indicate damage to either of the menisci either the lateral meniscus or the medial meniscus and remember that that joint line tenderness whether it's medial or lateral gives you a clue as to which of the menisci is potentially damaged and also in addition to reproduction of the patient's familiar pain there may also be possible clicking popping and reports of instability okay now for the psychometrics of Thessaly's test, they're really not that great. It's not very good as a standalone test. You can see the sensitivity is about 65%. In other words, if this test is negative, there's a 65% chance that they do not have an injury to their menisci. And the specificity is a little bit worse, ranging from 39% to 53%. So as a standalone test, you should not use it to either rule down or rule up an injury to the meniscus, but you should combine it with some of the other tests that we're gonna look at right now. The second meniscus special test we'll look at is Apley's compression test, also called Apley's grind test. To perform this test, the patient will be positioned in prone, as you see right here, with their test side knee bent to 90 degrees. 
In this case, I'm gonna be performing this test on her left knee right here. And in reality, I should be standing on the same side as that that I'm testing, but I'm just standing on the opposite side here for the sake of the video, okay? So with the test side knee bent to 90 degrees, the PT, that is me, will firmly grasp the patient's tibia, as you see right there, and I'm gonna apply a compression force vertically downward, okay? So there's the compression force. And while maintaining that compression force, I'm gonna slowly apply internal and external rotation about the tibia relative to the femur. So maintain the compression force and basically just rotate their lower leg. One of those directions may be painful and the other may be painless. All it takes is pain at any point in this test for the test to be positive. So a negative Apley's compression test will be painless, and it likely indicates that both menisci in that knee are healthy and intact. Whereas a positive test is indicated by reproduction of the patient's familiar knee pain, and as with other menisci special tests, there may also be possible clicking, popping, etc. Let's take one more look at this test. So the patient isn't prone, and their test side knee is bent to 90 degrees of flexion and we're going to firmly grasp their lower leg just proximal to the ankle and apply a compression force vertically downward. And while maintaining that compression force, we're gonna move the knee through internal and external rotation. And we're gonna monitor for clicking, popping, and also their subjective reports of pain. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.